Mathematics is the foundation of art through history. Throughout the evolution of humankind, creation of art has been a crucial intrinsic ability to express. But defining art, pinpointing its stamps, and precisely determining which aspects of life coincide with its existence has been an enormous problem with multiple theories, but no concrete solution. However, through analyzing reoccurring patterns in art pieces throughout history, we've been able to derive one thing. Versatility of mathematics has been the unlikely driving force behind our decisions to create. So to look at the presence of math uh, throughout art history, it's best to start with mathematical innovations found in nature. Um, one of the first life forms on Earth were the protozoa, single-celled microscopic animals in the most loose meaning of the word. They don't move very often because their movement is limited to the environment, meaning the ones found on dry land couldn't um, use the cilia located on their cell membranes, and if they didn't find food, they would die. However, if they developed in the ocean, their thin membranes could not handle the pressures uh, of, in the oceans at that time. The way they managed to beat the odds was by forming thin shells made of chitin. Formation of these shells was, in evolutionary terms, considered favorable, so the ones that had shells survived and the ones that didn't died out. But Darwinian evolutionary steps don't have to be great, they just have to be good enough. So to make these shells great, survivability shouldn't be the only goal, but efficiency in food storage, consumption, and movement. Um, the main problem they had was how to deliver food to all parts of the cell in the most efficient way. The original shell looked um, more like these. They had um, a structure which resembled a tomb with one entrance that was also used as an exit. But with the increasing size of protozoa, um, transfer of food and waste would quickly become an issue. Um, the way they resolved it was by creating complex geometric shapes which would increase the surface area, but more importantly allow the existence of more entrances and exits. Um, these are some of the examples which um, um, are more important later on. Um, so what do these um, primitive protozoa have to do with art the mass? So if we fast forward a bit to um, the construction of the Colosseum in Rome. Um, this massive building was built around um, 72 AD and um, it was a massive arena which served as a pinnacle of architecture, seamlessly blending complex mathematics and artistic innovations to become one of the biggest inspirations for artists in the next few centuries. Um, one of the innovations implemented into the construction of Colosseum was um, the way 50 to 80,000 people could um, attend any event taking place there. Uh, the reason this proposed a problem at first um, were the logistics of thousands of people entering and leaving such a place um, in a reasonable amount of time. So to fix that issue, they uh, turned to geometry. Um, the Colosseum was designed to have multiple concentric circles with plethora of entrances and exits with stairways and using the manipulation of the convex nature of the curve, they would allow um, um, less time uh, needed for the people to leave such a place. Um, the, interesting, the interesting thing is that the Colosseum was designed on the basic principles of the evolutionary formation of protozoan shells, with the main focus on efficiency again. Um, so if we think about the people as um, the food particles in the protozoan shell. The analogy is that all of those corridors found um, in the protozoan shells resemble the ones found in the Colosseum. Um, current theories that Romans observed and learned from these shells washed away on the nearby beach, but further investigation in the Geological composition of the area is still in progress. Um, here is some of the evidence found uh, for the resemblance between these two structures. Um, this was one of the earliest examples of humans finding ideal mathematical solutions um, in nature. Um, nature which, through evolution, trial and error, managed to obtain them. But these were only the practical advantages of math.
throughout the development of um, different cultures, patterns and prints with um, perfect shapes, with straight lines, circles, uh, became the pinnacle of art, of beauty, essentially. So early civilizations were drawn to these patterns, and to them, um, they represented perfection. And um, at that time, perfection equal beauty. For a long time, this was the only point of art, that art must be beautiful. So all throughout the first millennium and into the second, almost every art piece contains some sort of mathematical perfection. Um, one of those examples are the uh, numerous arches found in cathedrals built in the 17th century. They follow the equation derived from the shape of the curve formed by a hanging chain called the h and or catenary, with an equation of y equals c plus a cosh x a. Um, this is a hy hyperbolic function, which essentially is different from a parabola uh, because the function chain, uh, changes with the increased um, number of um, chain lengths, to say, I think. Um, during this um, time, we have the works of Leonardo da Vinci being praised for encompassing and integrating concepts like uh, linear perspective, symmetry, the golden ratio, which is also present um, in the design of uh, the Great Pyramids of Giza, um, as well as some forms of um, early shells. Um, Vincent van Gogh is also an example of an artist which used mathematics as a way to form his own style. Um, his signature style was considered to be the birth of an era called uh, Impressionism. A, it was a direct rebellion against the cruel realism which came before, but it still contained the human uh, admiration towards the mathematical principles uh, found in nature. Um, the easily recognizable Starry Night is made of unique brush strokes stacked and um, unblended colors which were made to achieve a dynamic look. This technique almost perfectly follows the laws of turbulence later established by the Russian scientist um, Kolmogorov. So this was supposed to be a GIF showing you the turbulent flow and fluid dynamics, but I cannot get it to work, so yeah. But dynamic turbulence is found in nature. Um, from the cascading waterfalls to um, the formation of the red spot of Jupiter. Um, Van Gogh did not know about dynamic turbulence, but his innate attraction towards um, nature, which again through trial and error, um, acquired and achieved mathematical perfection, um, inspired him to create and to express. So the next era in the history of art is called Romanticism. Um, romanticism was essentially a response to the easygoing lifestyle uh, presented by Impressionism. Um, the main feature which separates Romanticism from other eras is the fact that um, it promoted uh, pain and suffering as a crucial part of living. So we have who is essentially thought of as um, the creator of Romanticism, the idea of Romanticism, um, Victor Hugo, who wrote the preface to his play Cromwell, which is still considered as the manifesto of that era. Here he would uh, attempt to define the term grotesque and apply it to art, saying perfection and beauty is boring and dull, while the grotesque brings back the excitement. Um, during this time, art trade away from the mathematical perfection presented in nature, favoring imperfect shapes, unpredictability, and gore. This was also the first time in history mathematics were, um, mathematics and its practicality and universality would completely disappear from art. No more straight lines, perfect shapes, or um, conventional beauty. So here are some examples of grotesque pieces of art. Um, they differ from um, 
for example, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, um, in ways um, in which they don't tend to have a shape. Um, they aren't there to present and to um, promote um, the natural beauty of perfection, but um, they're there to evoke a feeling of sadness, of pain, um, an idea which was essential to Romanticism to the point where there was a special German world, word called uh, Weltschmerz, which meant world pain. This would change again, primarily after World War II, when efficiency in design would again be required, promoting the return of math and art. So an example for this is the design of trains, which at first um, had um, rough edges, boxy shape, giving um, away the imposing feeling of um, a great machine. but after um, economies crashed, there was a need for a train which was faster, but also used less energy. Um, once again, mimicking nature helped. Um, this time, they designed the trains to look like beaks um, of birds, which are intrinsically aerodynamic. Uh, this biomimicry continued to the modern day, making mathematical perfection, once again, um, the focal point of art. Human perception of art is directly linked to nature, um, unconsciously alluding to it or intentionally avoiding it, but nature is the way it is because of the mathematics present and the shapes it constructs while striving for efficiency and perfection. Um, art may not need to be beautiful, but art is almost always a response to mathematical ideals.